Open your Bibles, please, to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. Your Schofield Bible, page 1334. The third chapter of Revelation, beginning with verse 14 and reading through verse 22. The text verse is the 20th verse. We'll read these verses responsibly. Let's stand, please. Standing always for the reading of God's Word. And under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my father in his throne. Let's finish together on the 22nd verse, please. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this evening's service. We, of course, want your will to be accomplished. We pray that each heart individually will be open to the hearing of thy word and that thou wouldst reach deep into the needs of our lives and help that these needs might be fulfilled. We pray that you'd bless and help concerning the preaching hour, that thou wouldst bless with power our preacher. We pray that you'd bless to each listener with the power to hear. May we hear on purpose. May we decide on purpose to do with the message what we ought. In Jesus' name, amen. You just heard the NIV version of that song. That stands up when I'm growing tired and feeble. I think that in the original language is when I'm growing old and feeble. Isn't that right? I just thought I'd let you know Ms. Howes refuses to use the word old when she's growing old. And uh, so we have our liberal singers, just like we have our liberal theologians, you know. And... uh, (laughs) She is growing tired and feeble, and I'm growing old and feeble. Every man to his own choosing what word he wants to use. This audience is the most varied group of people in the world. You talk about a cosmopolitan group of people. We have people in this room tonight who cannot read or write. They're called deacons, but we... Uh, we have, we do. I know we have people tonight who cannot read and write. I know of at least a half dozen people that can't write their own names. I mean that. We also have more college graduates in this room than you'll have in any room in America tonight, any church anywhere in America. More college graduates attend this church than attend any church. I, I'll, I'll prove it to you. How many of you have a college degree? Would you raise your hand, please? You graduate college. Uh, that hundreds, probably a couple of thousand of you. And uh, that means that you're just uneducated on different subjects than the illiterate people. Not only that, <clears throat> we have people tonight who attend a Christian college. And then we have young people whose parents will not allow them to choose to attend a Christian school. And they go to the public schools and they're as welcome here as anybody else. We have people here tonight who live in homes that cost several hundred thousand dollars. We have people tonight who sleep on the streets of Lower Wacker Drive. We have folks tonight who's, who could sign a check, could transfer several hundred thousand dollars from one person to another, and you feel free to do that tonight if you'd like. 
We have other people tonight who do who are who if you have anything to eat tomorrow it'd be because of food stamps and welfare. I don't think you understand the cosmopolitan makeup of this church. We have people here that have grown up in the city apartment light house life. And then we have folks here who have grown up on the farm. We have southerners here tonight. And then in addition to them, we have the lesser intelligent people who live in the north of the south. And uh, I'm going to preach the truth with you, like it or not. But uh, tonight, uh, this message is a very simple one. And it's going to apply sometime during the message to everyone in this room tonight. And so I want you to listen. I doubt if you'll ever hear a more simple sermon, and yet simplicity that will teach to you a doctrine that is profound. I want to speak tonight on the subject, if any man. If any man. Before I read the scripture, before I teach, preach the message, I want to read a few verses. You don't need to turn to it. I just want to read a few verses from Revelation. I read this verse in chapter 2, verse 7, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life. I read in chapter 2 and verse 11, He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. I read in chapter 2, verse 17, To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna. I read in verse 26 of chapter 2, And he that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end, to him will I give power over the nations. I read in chapter 3 and verse 5, He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. I read in chapter 3 and verse 12, To him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I read in chapter 3 and verse number uh, 21, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. And then I use my text verse tonight, Behold, I stand at the door and knock, If any man... Any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. Our Heavenly Father, I come now to bring a brief but vital message. May every ear be in tune and every eye focused on this preacher and every mind focused on this message. In Jesus' name, amen. Here are seven churches. Don't leave me. Here are seven churches, most of whom have a serious flaw or serious flaws. We call this these seven letters to the seven churches in Asia Minor. For example, the church at Ephesus. The Bible says it was a church that had left its first love. It had not ceased loving God, It had changed its first love for a deeper love. And God says to the church at Ephesus, I want you to keep that deeper love, but I want you to go back and recapture your first love. I want you to love me with that deep, meditative uh, love that you have now, but go back and get that first amen, hallelujah, glory to God, and praise the Lord. And add that first love to the deep love that you have now. But I want you to notice this, listen carefully now, that the people who attended this church had no choice. It's called the church in Ephesus. There was no other church there. You went to the church here or you went to no church at all. So the people had no choice whatsoever. But the Bible says, To him that overcometh. Well, I grant to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So God comes to to a fellow in Ephesus and he says to him, Children, be still now on the front row. He says to him, He says, uh, the church has left its first love. And the church is not what it used to be. But he says, I want to say to every member of that church, if you will overcome, I will give you a special privilege. Which means that though the church was not what it ought to be, any member of that church could be what he ought to be. The church at Pergamos was a worldly church. 
Bible says they dwelt where Satan's seat is. The word seat means throne. And the Bible says that Satan is the god of this world, the prince of the power of the air. And this church at Pergamos dwelt where Satan's seat was or in the world. If this church were in existence tonight, its deacons would go mix swimming. If this church, this church were in the world tonight, its young people would listen to rock music. If this church were in the world tonight, its Sunday school teachers would watch the soap operas. If this church were in the world tonight, its ladies would wear shorts and pants in public. If this church were in the world tonight, in this generation, it would be what we would call an ear-tickling, back-scratching, penny-pinching, nickel-nipping, soft-sofing, pink eliminated, compromising church. But God comes to this church and He says to him that overcometh. Now, I want you to notice that the people in this church had no choice. It was called the church in Pergamos. There was no other church in Pergamos. If there had been another church in Pergamos, then the good fundamental people should have gone to that other church. But there was no choice. So God comes to these people, these good spiritual people, in this worldly church. And a church, by the way, not only was worldly, but uh, it was a denominational controlled church. It says you have those there that believe the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which means control the laity, or denominational control, I think. And this church was a denomination. If this church were alive today, it'd be an American Baptist church <clears throat> or a Southern Baptist church. Now, I want you to notice if there'd been another church in Pergamos, the fundamental people should have gone to the other church. But there was no choice. They had to go here. And God simply says, even though you are in this world, a denominational controlled church, any individual there can still make it for God. The church at Sardis. The Bible says it was a dead church had a name that was alive. Are you listening to me? A name that was alive, but a dead church. No more joy. They'd lost their zeal. They'd lost their soul winning. They'd lost their excitement. They'd lost their amens. They'd lost their thrill. And the church, though it had a name to be alive, it was a dead church. But I want you to notice that the people there had no other choice. It wasn't called a church in Sardis. It was called the church in Sardis. Which means that they had one choice. If they went to church at all, they went to the church in Sardis. But God comes to the member of this dead church and says, you don't have to be dead. Though you belong to a church in Ephesus that's left its first love, you don't have to individually leave your first love. And though you belong to a church that's worldly in Pergamos, you don't have to individually be worldly. And though you belong to a church that's dead in Sardis, you have no other choice. You've got to belong there, but to him that overcometh. That means anybody in Ephesus could overcome the, the, loss, of their, the uh, loss of their first love. Anybody in Pergamos could overcome the worldly church. Anybody in Sardis could overcome the dead church. And God says to him, overcometh. In Thyatira, we have the church in Thyatira. They had a lady in the church called Jezebel. This church was controlled by Jezebel. <clears throat> it was a unisex church. It was a church where a woman controlled the church. Now, I want to say what I've said before. No woman has any business behind a pulpit preaching. None whatsoever. You say, I don't agree with you. It's not me you don't agree with. It's God you don't agree with. The leadership of a New Testament church ought to be in the hands of men. The leadership of a Christian college ought to be in the hands of men. The, the leadership of a nation ought not to be in the hands of a queen but a king. It ought not to be a woman... Uh, attorney General, there ought to be a man who's Attorney General. Leadership of a city ought to be in the hands of men. Leadership of a country ought to be in the hands of men. Leadership of a state ought to be in the hands of a man. Supreme Court ought to be in the hands of men. Now, <clears throat> this church was controlled by a woman. It was a unisex church. But the people had no choice. There was no other church in Thyatira. It's the church in Thyatira. Now, these fundamental people, if there had been a choice, they should have gone to a stronger fundamental church. But if they had no choice, they ought to go to the best church they can find. And so they went to the church in Thyatira. But it says, to him that overcometh, will I allow to rule with a rod of iron and give him the morning star. Now, what God is saying here is if you belong to a worldly church, you don't have to be worldly. If you belong to a church that left its first love, you can still have your first love. If you belong to a church that's dead, you can still be alive. If you belong to a church that's controlled by a woman, controlled by a denomination, or a church that is a unisex church, you can still be an old-fashioned, independent, fundamental Baptist in your heart. To him that overcometh. 
There's a place called Laodicea. One of these seven letters to the seven churches was written to the church in Laodicea. The church in Laodicea was a church that was rich but lukewarm. God said, you're neither hot nor cold. Because you're neither hot nor cold, I'll spew out of my mouth. God said, I would that you were hot or cold. You say you're rich and increased with goods, but I say that you're wretched and blind. Now, God comes, though, and says to the members in that church, though you are in a church where people are neither hot or cold, anybody in that church can be on fire for God. God comes and says, though the church is not what it ought to be, you can be what you ought to be. And every time he concludes one of these letters, he says, to him that overcometh. But to him that overcometh, leaving the first love. To him that overcometh, a dead church. Him that overcometh, a worldly church. Him that overcometh, a woman-controlled church. To him that overcometh, a church that's, that's either hot or cold. God said that in these churches that were not what they ought to be, any individual Christian can be what he ought to be. Now, what are the lessons? <laughs> Number one, get in the right church, right kind of church if you can. If you can, you get an independent, fundamental, soul-winning, King James Bible, Baptist church. If you can, you get in a church that has convictions and standards and loves not this present world, a church that's not dead but alive, a church that's not lukewarm but on fire for God, a church that's not denominational control but Holy Spirit control, a church that is has not left its first love but still has its first love. If you can, get in that kind of a church. But if you cannot, you can still make it as a Christian. What's he saying? Get in a good, fundamental Christian school if you can. He's saying, if you can go to a Christian school, go to a Christian school. He's saying, if, you can, if your parents will let you go to a Christian school, go to a Christian school. And get in an independent Baptist Christian school. And get in a Christian school where there's standards and convictions, where this old King James Bible is considered the preserved Word of God. God said, get in that kind of school. But if it is impossible for you to get in that kind of school, you can still make it. God says, live in a decent neighborhood if you can. If you can live in a good neighborhood, you live in a good neighborhood. But if you're a bus kid and stuck in a ghetto area, and it's not a good neighborhood, and dope is sold on every street corner, and, and, and lewdness and adultery and fornication is a way of life, God said, if you, live, if you don't live in that kind of neighborhood, if you can get out of it, but if you can't get out of it, you can still make it. God is saying... <coughs> Get a job if you can in a Christian atmosphere. If you can get a job somewhere in an atmosphere that's Christian, where Christ is honored and decency is a way of life and vulgarity is not a part, uh, a manner of life, you get in a job like that. But if you can't get a job like that, if you've got to work out in the world somewhere and hear God's name cursed every day and hear rock music played every day, God said if that's, you have to do that, you can still make it. You see, God is stripping away from every individual here the excuse that he can't make it if he's in the wrong kind of a church. What God is saying is, <coughs> you run with the right crowd if you can. You run with the right crowd if you can. Don't run with a liberal crowd. Don't run with the, the rebel crowd. Don't run with the worldly crowd. Don't run with the loose crowd. If there is a good crowd to run with, but God said, if there is no good crowd to run with, you can still make it. We live in a land where everybody <coughs> blames everything. Uh, for example, young people loot, loot the stores and we blame the society. <coughs> the black people say, uh, we, we'll, we'll loot the stores because we didn't have the privilege of white people. And the poor people say, we didn't have the privilege of rich people. Now, you listen carefully to me. I don't care if you're black or green or chartreuse. I don't care if you're fuchsia. I don't care if you're yellow. I don't care if you're orange. I don't care if you're red. I don't care if you're brown. You listen to me. I don't care if you live in the ghetto. I don't care if your neighbors are all heathen. I don't care if you have to run with the worst crowd in the world. Let me tell you, you are going to give account of yourself to God Almighty. <coughs> So God says, run with the right crowd if you can. If you can't, you can still make it. God said, get in the right kind of church if you can, but if you can't, you can still make it. God said, get in a fundamental independent Baptist Christian school if you can. If you can't, you can still make it. God said, go to a fundamental Christian college 
that believes the King James Bible is the preserved Word of God, has standards and convictions, and believes in the old-time religion if you can, but if it is impossible, then you still can make it. Get in a good, decent neighborhood if you can. If you can't, you can still make it. Get in a Christian atmosphere if you can. If you can't, you can still make it. Tonight, God comes to a Bible club member. And God says to you, you're stuck in a, Christ, in, a, in a public school. You can't go to a Christian school. There's nobody to pay your tuition. And I think I'm talking basically Bible club members over in this section. God said to you, you can't go to a Christian school. You've got to go to a school where the girls dress like harlots every, every Monday morning. You've got to go to a school where teachers make fun of that book. You've got to go to a school where the old-time religion is laughed at as being uncultured or unrefined. You've got to go to a school where they say that, that man came from a monkey. And the only proof of that is the teacher that teaches it, I believe, did evolve from being a monkey. Once there was an amoeba beginning to begin. Then there was a monkey with a tail tucked in. Then there was a baboon hanging from a tree, and now I'm a professor with a Ph.D. Now you listen to me. <coughs> You've got to go. <coughs> but I want to say, if you cannot go to a Christian school, and you have to go to Hammond, Hammond, Hammond High, you have to go to Gavitt, you have to go to Morton, you have to go to Munster High School, you have to go to Highland High School, you can still make it for God. <coughs> you can become a decent Christian. Now, if you had the choice and chose to go to the wrong school, God won't bless you. But if you have no choice, God is simply saying, if you go to the only church in Ephesus, you can still make it. If you go to the only church in Pergamos or Thyatira or, or Sardis or Laodicea, you can still make it. God comes tonight and God says to you truck drivers, you have to drive trucks. And thank God you do. And you have to, to, to drive trucks and you have to be tempted you're tempted almost every time you stop to take a drink of liquor. You're tempted almost every time you stop by lewd women wanting to sell their bodies to you for $1.98. You're tempted every time you stop. And God said, I wish you didn't have to be tempted, but God said, you still can live a decent Christian life. God comes tonight to you sailor lads back there. And God says, you're in the Navy. And you can't get out. You stupid guy, you already joined. But you can't get out. And you've got to be there in the PX where beer runs like a river. You've got to be there in the barracks where they profane the name of God, everything that's decent. You've got to be there where, where women are simply objects of their lust and so forth. You've got to do it. But God said, I don't care. You've got to be there. He says you can make it. You can make it. God comes tonight to a man in a secular job. You'd like to work in a Hammond Baptist schools or First Baptist Church. Don't you work out there in a factory somewhere? You work out there on the construction uh, uh, field somewhere. And you don't have the privilege of having prayer time. They don't have chapel every day where you work. They don't have prayer every day when you start the day where you work. You've got to work out there. Now, God said, if you could work in a better atmosphere, okay. But if you cannot work in a better atmosphere, God says you can make it. God comes tonight to a bus kid whose parents forbid you attending City Baptist schools. You live in the ghettos. You live in an area where God's name is profaned. You know where you can buy dope on the street corner. You see dirty literature exchanging hands all the time. You'd like to go to City Baptist School, but you can't go to City Baptist School because your parents won't let you go. Now, if you could go to City Baptist and don't, you're going to answer to God for it. But if you can't go to City Baptist, I want to tell you, God is saying tonight, if any bus kid will overcome. God comes tonight to a woman jailed in, in the public workforce. You've got to go to work where you're simply a sex object. They insult you. They proposition you. You've got to hear the filthiest, dirtiest jokes and the filthiest, dirtiest minds. You've got to hear God's name profane. And you wish you had some way to be liberated from the bondage of your Egypt 
and yet you can't. You're stuck there. You've got to stay there. I've got news for you. You can be a clean moral woman. You can be a dedicated Christian. You can be a consecrated soul winner. I don't care where you have to work, what school you go to, what church you have to go to, what job you have to have. If you're a truck driver on the road, a sailor in the barracks, a bus kid in the ghetto, or a worker on a job, bless God, if you have to be there, you can overcome. God comes to a college young man who goes to chapel at 11 o'clock every day and then goes to church ed, gets in his car and drives to some secular job. And the Christ that you've honored in chapel is cursed on the job. And the Bible that you believed and been taught in chapel and classroom is rejected on a job. And the morals that you have been taught are laughed at on a job. I want to tell you, you Howells Anderson College young men who have to go out and work in these secular places, I want to tell you, you can be clean, you can be pure. I want to say in this heathen pagan society, if any man, if any sailor, if any truck driver, if any secretary, if any public school student, if any bus kid, he that overcometh. You may live in Sardis, but you can't overcome. You may go to church in Pergamos, but you can't overcome. You may go in the Odyssea, but you can't overcome. You may go to the church in Ephesus, but you can't overcome. You may go to the church in Thyatira, but you can overcome. I'm saying God Almighty is saying tonight, you get in the best crowd you can and of the best influences you can. And when you've done that, if you have to have bad influences, you still must answer to God for yourself and you can't overcome. It's Friday afternoon. It's about five o'clock. The barracks are about to empty. It's 1945. World War II is in the closing months. 82nd Airborne Division is stationed in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. The boy's about to leave. <coughs> On my footlocker is a Bible. On the shelf behind my bed is a scripture. Matthew 6, 33. <coughs> the fellows come to me. And they say, hey, Jack, we got some hot women tonight. Won't you go with us? Hey, Jack, you going to stay and read your Bible? Hey, Jack, hey, preacher, you going to stay and pray tonight? Come on and go with us. They know I won't go. I've got my testimony on that footlocker. It's called the Bible. I've got my testimony on that chef. It's called Matthew 6.33. I go to bed. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I feel somebody saying, Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. Hey, Jack. i got to talk to you. A flashlight comes, and we sit there on the footlocker together. Jack, I just got word from home. My wife has left me. I just got word from home. My life has fallen apart. Jack, can you help me? What I'm trying to tell you... I had no church to go to. I had no Hiles Anderson College Chapel to attend. I had no Hammond. I was 18 years old. I had no good fundamental church. I had no chapel. I had no Christian college. By cracky, if I can make it, you can. It's the Greyhound bus station. Birmingham, Alabama. Just a few hours before, my paratroop wings have been pinned on my chest. Just a few hours before, I've had my 82nd Airborne Division sewn to my shoulder. Just a few hours before, I've had a parachute sewn to my cap. Just a few hours before, I have put on and shined to a high gloss my paratroop boots with parachute suspension lines as boot laces. I'm a proud man. I just finished the training. 1,100 men started and 300 finished it. I'm proud. I go to the bus station. I have no Dr. Evans. I'm an 18-year-old lad. I have no Dr. Hiles. I have no Dr. Scott. I have no Ed Lapina. I have no Dr. Sprunger. I have no Roy Moffat. I have no Christian teachers. I get off the bus by myself. The bus station, Birmingham, Alabama. 
a beautiful young lady is standing down at the bottom of the steps. She looks at me and she says, Come on, trooper. I've got the room all paid for. It won't cost you a dime. You just come with me and I'll give you the weekend of your life. I didn't say anything. She said, You are alone, aren't you? And I said, No, ma'am, I'm not alone. She said, Who's with you? I said, Jesus is with me. Now, if I can stay clean and pure with that kind of temptation, with no good church to go to, and a bunch of liberal chaplains calling themselves God's men, you at Howells Anderson College and Heaven Baptist schools can stay clean and pure and decent and right if any man overcome. It's fit for North Carolina. 19-year-old groom and a teenage bride have no car. We have no apartment. We live in one room. We have no kitchen. We have no stove. Just got married. We have no choice. We have to go to the only church within walking distance. We have no other way. Didn't have buses in those days. We have to go to the First Baptist Church of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Louis Shoup Gaines was the pastor. Dead as Princess Diana's funeral. And as dead as Princess Diana. But we went. <coughs> we had no other choice. But we went to church. We went Sunday morning when they had a thousand people. We went Sunday night when they had a hundred people. We went Wednesday night when they met in the church parlor with about 20 people for a little Bible study on Wednesday night. Now God said to the people in Thyatira, that's the only church there, you ought to go there, but you don't have to be like the church. Same thing with Pergamos, Ephesus, Laodicea, and Sardis. It's a J.C. Penney store. I work there about 30 hours a week after school when I was in college. In my 30 hours, I sold more merchandise than any man sold in the entire J.C. Penney Company who worked all day long for six days a week. I did not act pious. I did not walk up to each member who each member of the the, the uh, store, all the clerks, and say, "Have you been regenerated by the blood of the Lamb? Have you been washed in the precious blood?" You say, "Well, how did you, what did you do?" <coughs> I worked hard. I was decent, honest, friendly, courteous, and tried to live with my convictions. When I left that place, I went to pastor a church out in the country, and I think about 21 of those people got saved. I had won to Christ, or, or won to Christ. They joined the church out in the country, and I was pastor of most of the people who worked in that J.C. Penney store. <coughs> I'm trying to say tonight, what God is saying is this. If you are a family in a dead church, get out. If you're, if you say, well, how's my Uncle George and my grandpa and grandma are buried in the cemetery? Dig them up. We'll bury them behind the church out here. All of this country... We have people that could be in red-hot fundamental churches who are not in red-hot fundamental churches. God said, if you can, get out. But if you can, you can still make it. God says to young people in college age, get out of the state university. He says to those high schoolers here in Hammond Baptist High School, running with the wrong crowd at Hammond Baptist High School. And there is a wrong crowd at Heaven Baptist High School. God says, quit running with that stupid crowd. Let those rebels go on their own. Get out of that crowd you're in. God comes to the college students and says, quit listening to the critics. Quit listening to those that are criticizing Dr. Evans or Dr. Scott or Dr. Young. Now I want to make it very clear. One fellow said not long ago, said the only one of the administrators out there that I have confidence in is Dr. Hiles. Well, then scratch me off your list, bozo. 
If you're against that man right there, you're against me. If you're against that man, 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 you're against me. And I can go on and on and on and on. I'm simply saying, you get away from that critical know-it-all crowd that the great theologians of history, who one of these days will be walled in a sewer of backsliding, and you get with the right crowd. But to all of us, he says, Choose the best influence possible. But if you can't, you can still make it. You have no excuse. You can't blame your circumstances and you can't blame your society. You folks in Ephesus, the church. Go on. Go there. But you can overcome their losing their first love. You folks in the church in Sardis, you have no other choice. It's the church in Sardis. It's dead, but you go on and go there. If nobody else will have a bus route, you have one. Nobody else wins souls, you start a soul winning club. To him that overcometh. In Ephesus... The church that left its first love, to him it overcometh. In Pergamos, the worldly church, to him it overcometh. In Sardis, the dead church, to him it overcometh. To Thyatira, the woman-controlled unisex church, to him that overcometh. And to the lukewarm church, rich, conceited, self-assured, but in God's eyes, poor and wretched and miserable and blind, to him overcometh. I close with this. You find the best circumstances that you are allowed to have. And you get yourself in the best influence and the best environment that you possibly can find. But if you're in the Navy and can't, if you're a truck driver and can't, if you're a ghetto-bound teenager and can't, you're a public school Bible club student and can't, don't you come trotting up and saying, I could have turned out okay if I could have lived in a better neighborhood. No, sir. You can turn out okay anyway. Amen. To him that overcometh. To him that overcometh. In every single church, no matter how rotten it was, God says, He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear. And no matter how rotten the church was and how wicked it was and how dead it was, God said to him that overcometh, to him that overcometh, choose the best influence, environment that you possibly can. And you'll face God if you don't. But if you're stuck somewhere where you have to drive a truck, have to be in the Navy, have to live in a ghetto area, have to work in a secular environment, God plainly says... You can overcome. Shall we stand, please? The choir will sing.